Hello, I'm Neil Dealey, co-founder and partner of Architects and Urban Planners Metropolitan Workshop. Welcome to Reshaped, a podcast series to mark our 15th year and to record perspectives on how the built environment is changing and needs to change in this historic moment. We ask leading thinkers and doers to respond to issues highlighted by the pandemic while we're in the throes of change and memories and perspectives are fresh. Has the door opened to a new era? We think so. Our planning system, currently under review by the Conservative government, is supposed to be an arbiter of competing interests. But when it comes to people's participation and how communities perceive its workings, they often feel excluded. There is much mistrust of the system, of local authorities and developers, our speaker in this episode reports. Perhaps that is because the planning system takes decisions on people's behalf, but often not in their perceived interest, as she puts it. Daisy Froud is a strategist specialising in brief development, community engagement and participatory design. Well, the role of people in the planning system, or rather the role of the planning system for people, understanding people as citizens, communities in a country in a city, in a neighbourhood, the planning system should be there as an, as an arbitrator of public and private interests to ensure that the decisions are taken, that are taken about buildings, about places, work in the interests of, of the community, citizens as a whole. That's, that's the theory. The reality uh, at the moment in England, in the experience, I think, of many citizens would be that the planning system is something that they don't fully either understand or have the opportunity to participate in and that it it can seem that it's a a structure that takes decisions on their behalf and sometimes not in their interests um, but is an arbiter of, of what does or doesn't happen and people may be frustrated by that sometimes as individuals and they may be frustrated by it sometimes as communities but it has still has tremendous potential to represent diverse interests, perhaps with a bit of tweaking. Fundamentally, the planning policy that determines what can and can't happen is very weighted, it's very pro-development, and it's weighted in the way it operates towards people who do want to build and put things out there. I'm, I'm usually involved in two different ways, depending on the type of project I'm on. Either I'm working with local authorities, on local authority projects, with design teams, and we are developing a particular scheme for an area. It's often housing. Sometimes it's housing on a site that's been identified as surplus. That would often be a car park these days, for example, because it goes with policy. That means we're trying to reduce the amount of car use. Sometimes it would be about redevelopment of or infill development to a housing estate. So in those situations, um, I'm often working with people where the issues that are raised by participants are not ones we can deal with at the design stage. So people have have been unaware of the opportunity or don't really see there's a meaningful opportunity to shape those big decisions about where development should happen, how tall or what shape development should be, what kind of infrastructure is coming with development. So people ask really important, interesting, intelligent questions, but they ask that at the design stage where it's often where they've become aware of that opportunity. And so there's a lot of frustration there. The other place I'd get more involved is working directly with communities. So I'm actually on that side of the coin talking to the me in the first half of the story. COVID has had a real impact on, well, It's had an impact on how communities that I work with feel about planning on different levels. I mean, one is already, I have to stress, and, you know, maybe I've been more tactful about this in some of the previous things I've said, but there's a massive level of distrust amongst many community groups, particularly across London and the networks of community groups across London, who I work and associate with. There's massive distrust in developers, particularly, and much development these days has to be done in partnership 
with the private sector. There's also distrust in local authorities. Um, sometimes that's a bit misplaced. That pe People often assume local authorities have far more power than they actually have. So I think people have been very, very worried that because engagement has had to move online, like everything else, this is an opportunity for schemes to be pushed through on the argument that we need this more than ever now, you know, the spectre of economic crisis looming. We definitely do need better homes, you know, more than ever, but a worry that things won't be done with due process. Um, you know, there's a real problem with digital inequality in this country. So, so many people are unable to now participate meaningfully. So, I think a lot of engagement has moved online really nimbly in really intelligent, creative ways. And I think that the communities I work with, I'm still having a very good dynamic with, but we've lost so many people who just cannot participate. So I think the distrust is there because people don't see that the planning system is going to take interest in the long-term public interest, whether it comes to climate or whether it comes to what's actually working well for an existing community. Tremendous concerns about gentrification and displacement of existing communities, even if that wasn't an intention of the project, just through improvement, through planning, which is quite a loaded term, improvement, you know, who's improvement. So it, it's in a particularly bad place right now, but these things could be resolved with tweaks to the system or really thinking about what are the values that should be driving the system. When I use the phrase tweaks to the planning system, I'm probably being very English in my choice of words when what I actually mean is massive strategic redesign. But I mean, but what I mean is fundamentally, the idea of the planning system is a good one. The idea of balancing different interests is a good one, not just public and private ones, but um, you know, these diagrams that do come forward every time people start reinventing planning systems, you know, balancing social ones, economic ones, environmental ones, although of course, you know, the environmental one has more and more got to have a bigger chunk of thinking. But I would like to see a planning system that is far more weighted towards plans being made, particularly at the regional level and then trickling down to the local level, but also kind of trickling up and down regional, local neighbourhood with big public conversations about the values that should be driving the way in which we produce space, in which we make cities, and then setting priorities, parameters and values for the development of specific areas that can then be responded to. Um, that ki I mean, that kind of you know, front-loading, to use a bit of jargon, is being recommended at the moment, and in fact does come forward in the current planning white paper, but that would need to be accompanied by, it wouldn't be instead of, a really good then community design review as schemes come forward and just taking the lessons that you have from good community engagement. We know that if we shape things collectively early on and agree a brief priorities, a direction, we can then test evolving things against them and weigh up compromises and weigh up different interests as we go. And the planning system has the potential, a planning system has the potential to work in that way, to be a structure for a deliberative public conversation. And there are times when it has done that to greater or lesser degrees. It's never really been a popular system, though, and that's the massive shift I'd like to see. It's always been a system, historically, along with many other aspects of political or you know, political life, that where technocrats and elected politicians uh, did the work. And we now have so much more capacity and so much more demand, um, capacity in terms of the technical possibilities we do have, but also demand from an informed populace. You know, we've become a more educated, informed group and diverse group of people over time that I would really like to see the potential taken to say, well, how could we, how could we do popular planning at a bigger level than just neighbourhood planning, which is really the options that exist to us at the moment? And how would the system be designed, tweaked <laughs> to accommodate that? That was Daisy Froud. Not everyone has access to the planning process, especially during the pandemic, which has pushed community engagement online and out of reach for some. We're in a particularly bad place at the moment, she says. Yet she emphasises that the planning system remains a good thing. What Daisy argues for is a more trusted planning process that engages people at a strategic earlier level and not just at a local level when the fundamental aspects of individual development proposals have been already determined. We need to reinvigorate planning and restore people's trust in it 
with big public conversations that deal with the issues people feel are most relevant right now. For example, climate change, housing, and economic opportunity. And those conversations would set the direction for local policy. Daisy is surely right when she argues that in order for people to engage with planning, they first need to believe in it. You can listen to other podcasts in the Reshape series at all the major providers, or go to our website, metwork.co.uk. Series directed by Lee Mallett, produced by David Michon and Justina Green, recorded and edited by Sean Crook. <laughs>